perspective on anger. I'm also going to talk about anger management tactics according to the Prophet ﷺ and according to the religion. This is a really important topic in Islam. But that's not an excuse. Then the divorce still happens. They're lessening the effect that the devil has on them. And we can approach a situation with, with our emotions under control. my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Islamic perspective on anger. So as some of you guys know, I studied psychology when I was in college. That was my major. So I really like thinking about like, you know, people's behaviors, people's thoughts, and so much of Islam tells us about how we should think, what we should do. It really dictates how we live our lives. There's so much in Islam about, you know, the way that we should be as human beings, and that includes the way that we should manage our emotions, such as anger. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the Islamic perspective on anger, what the Prophet told us about anger, you know, what comes in the religion about anger, and then I'm also going to talk about anger management tactics according to the Prophet ﷺ and according to the religion. Yeah, it's like Islamic anger management kind of. So as usual, I have notes on my phone and I will be looking down at it periodically. The first piece, I guess, or the first piece of information that I have regarding the Islamic perspective on anger is a hadith narrated by Abu Huraira. He narrated that a man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he asked him, for advice. Just generally, he asked him for advice. And what the Prophet told him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, three times, not just one time, is don't get mad, don't get mad, don't get mad. The Prophet could have advised him on anything. He could have advised him on any other topic, but he chose to advise him about not getting angry. So this indicates that this is a really important topic in Islam about being able to control your anger and not letting it get the best of you. So anger, generally speaking, is a force that can be used for good or it can be used for evil. Most of the time, unfortunately, it's used for evil. An example of using anger for good would be if somebody gets angry for the sake of Allah. Like for example, if somebody hears someone belittle God, for example, and they get angry about that, that's anger used for good. That's that's getting angry for a justified reason. And you know, in that kind of a situation where somebody is saying or doing something that is kufr or that like takes them out of the religion of Islam or is doing a sin, for example, getting angry in those situations is appropriate. But what one should do is one should channel their anger in that instance into bidding the good and forbidding the evil. In other words, if somebody's in that situation where they hear somebody belittle God, then they should get angry internally, you know, hate that that person did that, be upset that that person did that internally, but not just sit there and do nothing about it. They should go and do something about it, inform that person that they just did something that took them out of the religion. They shouldn't just sit there in silence and just listen to it. And there are many examples of using anger for a reason that's not good. Like there are a lot of people in a lot of countries when they get angry, they'll they'll like curse God or or they will curse the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for example. Or that they, they will curse the religion, for example. People do this and not usually in English, but in other languages people do this, especially when they're angry. And doing those things when you're angry, that's blasphemy. It takes you out of the religion of Islam. And it's known in the religion in Islam for somebody to commit kufr or commit blasphemy out of anger, that's not an excuse. So like being angry is, does not excuse them from falling into blasphemy. So that's an example where anger is really used for a bad reason. The Prophet Wasallam said that a person can say something that they deem harmless, but it will take them out of the religion of Islam. This is what he taught. So anger, we know Islamically, does not excuse a person from falling into that, from, from leaving the religion of Islam. Just because you're angry and you do something awful doesn't mean that you therefore get a free pass because you were angry. You need to be able to have control over yourself. That's something that requires practice and it requires focus and concentration and an effort. But it's something that as Muslims we should have, something that we should be doing. And another example of this is that the scholars in Islam 
used to say that if a person divorces his wife, for example, due to being angry, like he's, he's so angry that he divorces her, then the divorce still happens regardless of whether he was angry. In other words, it doesn't excuse you from committing a sin. It doesn't excuse you from kufur, from saying something that's blasphemous and bringing you out of the religion. And it doesn't excuse you from, you know, getting a divorce, for example. And just so you know, if you didn't know, in Islam, getting a divorce is as easy as saying a statement. It's really, really quick, Islamically. So uh, it's easy to, to get a divorce. You just say something. What the scholars are saying is that, and what the Prophet ﷺ taught us, is that anger does not excuse us for, from doing bad things, ultimately speaking. That's a huge, huge part of the Islamic perspective on anger. So now that I've kind of talked about the Islamic perspective on anger, I'm going to move on to talking about Islamic advice for anger management. So what did the Prophet ﷺ advise us to do when we get angry? He advised us to make wudu, ablution, so like washing the face, the hands up to the elbows, um, wet wiping the hair, and washing the feet. He advised us to do that. And the reason for it is very interesting. If you think about it, the devil, the shaitan, are made from fire. That's what they are composed of. And what puts out fire? Water. So when a person makes wudu, they're lessening the effect that the devil has on them. The Prophet ﷺ also advised the angry person to sit down. And that's because it's harder for a person who's sitting down to cause harm than for a person who's standing up. And then he advised those who get angry while sitting to lie down. He also advised the angry person to say, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim, which means I seek refuge in Allah from the damned devil. And this hadith was narrated by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ also said that if one is angry, then one should not speak. In other words, they shouldn't let their anger dictate their words. You shouldn't, you should be able to control your anger, calm yourself down, and then allow yourself to talk. And this is true, like, in, in relationships as well. If you get angry and you're really just in the heat of the moment angry, you might say something that you don't mean. Or you might commit kufr, for example, like I was talking about earlier. You might say something blasphemous. So the Prophet ﷺ advised us to stay silent when we're angry so that we can calm down, we can take a step back, and we can approach a situation with, with our emotions under control. Just to sum everything up, the Prophet ﷺ advised us not to get angry. Anger is a force that can be used for good or can be used for evil. When it's used for bad, it can cause extreme harm to the point that a person can even take themselves out of the religion of Islam without even knowing, or they can commit a sin maybe without even knowing, or they might divorce their wife and then they're just divorced and anger is not an excuse for doing bad things. That is the Islamic perspective on anger. The advice the Prophet used to give us was make wudu, sit down if you're standing, lie down if you're sitting, and if you're angry, don't talk. That's everything summed up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful and interesting. I like talking about different Islamic topics, especially ones that pertain to our thoughts and our emotions and our behaviors. Like I was saying, as a former psych major, uh, it's just a topic that really interests me. And don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I will see you guys in next week's video, inshallah. Salaam alaikum. Bye. Salaam Allah.